I'm Pradha and working as a customer success manager with Watson, uh, which is a lecturer's company. And uh, though my slides won't contain anything about Drupal, uh, but please consider me as one of you. I'm a long time Drupaler, uh, Drupal 8 and 9 expert grandmaster. Have worked with many companies, including at the moment, in the capacity of Drupal architect. So today we are going to uh, talk about uh, NextJS and uh, how Vercel is changing the paradigm about front-end technologies and the deployment environment needed to host front-end applications. Again, as a part of this slide as well, I may talk a lot about NextJS, but Vercel also supports more than 40 front-end frameworks apart from Vercel, apart from NextJS. This is little agenda. We will look at a couple of statistics uh, to understand what are the current sentiments about the inclination towards backend technologies, frontend technologies. We will look a little bit about NextJS framework. Again, I am not an expert in NextJS framework, but I think uh, we can look at some of the features uh, which would make sense as we come. Most of us are coming from CMS background. Then we will look at Vercel Frontend Cloud and with Thai products, we will also have a look at Quick Product Tool. Sounds good? Yes. So far with me? Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I assure I don't do the session, I know after this, it's a lunch time. <clears throat> Let's look at current sentiment and uh, we have put some statistics from 2016 and also the current year of 2023. If you look at 2016, uh, you can see the sentiment, uh, the proportion for the developers going for ROR is much little more than frontend developers. That is React. If you look at the last graph, you know, this is a big change. The proportion for users who are going for frontend technologies is much more than what it was for backend. This sentiment captures the end users and uh, definitely it is from 2021 uh, I guess, but the sentiment would remain same or at least it will keep on increasing towards the proportion of users. So, uh, the, as per the report from McKinsey, uh, they have compared the user base across multiple regions globally and also across multiple domains of applications. And this is what the outcome, the proportion of new users is much more than the proportions of existing users. So what it talks about, you know, the very first slide, it talks about how much emphasis or how much importance that we need to give for front-end technologies. And the second chart is about what is that we need to change in the application architecture to ensure the proportion of new users is retained. Okay? Uh, again, NextJS, as most of you might be knowing, this is a framework based on React framework and uh, primarily used for web development. There are some cases when people use it for mobile application development as well, but I would say primarily for web development. And uh, here are some of the features uh, like built in optimizations. Um, the way we have got image styles in uh, Drupal, uh, same way NextJS has got, uh, you know, it has got automated way of managing the images. We call it as image operations. And based on the screen size, based on the device size, it will deliver that image in the most optimized way. This also is applicable for your assets, files, CSS files, fonts. Uh, then we have got uh, the feature of data fetching, and this is a little advanced. Uh, this single topic itself can be a kind of session. And uh, uh, when I talk about data fetching, uh, it could be about static data, dynamic data, static portion of dynamic page, or uh, you know, uh, some part of dynamic page which can be delivered as a static page in the form of models or slideshows. Uh, let me speak some of the features. Uh, then we also have got something called as a middleware. Uh, middleware is also uh, one of the most sort of feature uh, from any 
deployment or uh, hosting company. This is where uh, Vercel has defined the new era for frontend development. Again, when we talk about Vercel itself or NextShares, uh, these both the NextShares as a framework and Vercel as a company, uh, it is developed by developers and for developers. Uh, the targeted customer base or the targeted user base for Vercel products is nothing but developers, you know. And this is where we always call it as a develop by developers and for developers. What is Frontend Cloud? So, uh, uh, again, I'm damn sure all of us, we know cloud infrastructures. We all are well versed with, sorry. We all are well versed with uh, Azure, AWS, or Google Clouds. So, whenever we talk about cloud, you know, nowadays everything is on cloud, but it doesn't stop there. You know, uh, when we use cloud, we need to take a call and whether how much time we are spending on cloud infrastructure management. Are we spending hours, days, weeks, or months to just manage the single application or manage the infrastructure for single application? Sorry for that. So uh, here, uh, Versa simplifies the infrastructure needs for your front-end applications. Okay? You go with Versa subscription, get the platform, and you are done. So whatever you need to run your application, it manages it so smoothly that you won't have to worry about from where it is coming. When it comes for deployment, when it comes for monitoring, when it comes for CIC, any kind of workflows, any kind of monitoring, like the way you do a new relic kind of systems. So it's simplified infrastructure. Uh, it also automates not many workflows, you know. Now, uh, the earlier session was a little bit about CIC. Some of the participants have asked some questions about CIC. So, you know, uh, the pain about CIC and the pain about managing CIC manually by developers is endless. Uh, as a developer, if I develop some functionality and if I want to push it to QA environment, is it really in my hand? In most of the cases, no. Uh, even to push it on dev or QA environment, uh, the team might have some kind of approval workflows. This is where you know it helps a lot. Such kind of workflows are automated so smoothly that developers are not at all dependent on DevOps kind of profiles. And kind of approval workflow is not at all required. Uh, strong defaults, it is applicable for performance as well as security. When I say strong defaults, it is specific to what kind of bandwidth, what kind of you know uh, edge regions. What kind of GB hours do you need any kind of secure compute kind of setup for your application deployment? This is something very much handy with you when your application is a part of platform. Application security and front-end observability. Security we all know, I can talk a little bit about observability. Uh, whenever we have got any application, you know, there are two parts about the application when we talk about observability. Very first thing, how my application performs over the internet. Okay, this is what we get to know from Google Analytics. Okay, I don't know if it is true with all of the systems and tools, but in but in most of the tools, including Google Analytics, we can block it at browser level. Uh, with version, we have something for analytics which cannot be blocked at browser level. So it really helps when it comes for getting the statistics of your analytics. It gives you real data. This is what it is about your application over the internet. What about your application over the platform? When you deploy your application, isn't it important to know how my application is performing in the platform as well? When I release the build, how much time it is taking? When I make the build, is it going smooth? Is it getting queued up? Why it is getting queued up? The build that I did last week, it took 30 seconds, the build that I did today, it took one and a half minute. What is the reason behind that? You know, all those things can be addressed with the help of this platform under the feature of observability. Any questions before we move on to next slide? So far, it's so good. You know, this is what we have to do. As a 
part of this infrastructure or technology making infrastructure. Uh, very first thing, uh, it supports region based global caching. Uh, so, with the help of edge, we are not limited only to a single region. So, we can go as close as possible to the end users of consumer of your application with the help of global caching. Routing, we all know something similar what we see in Google as well. Analytics and observability, we just talked about user session and data again, a generic concept. Scaling and provisioning. Uh, here as well, you know, this is something automatic. And uh, we, once application is there onto the platform, we don't have to worry about scaling and provisioning. Uh, it might happen that uh, throughout the year, our application may not need or demand the infrastructures. But during certain events like Diwali or Christmas, it may need sudden jump in, in terms of uh, footfall, resulting in further more resources. So even that can be something automated completely. UI collaboration testing. Uh, you know, this is what I was talking about. If I'm a developer, if I work on single feature, so going by generic git flow that we all are aware about, I will create a feature branch, I will raise a PR request that might get merged with dev branch, after that it might get merged with QA branch and at last release branch. This itself is very, very time consuming process. So here what it happens, uh, the moment I work on my feature branch and once that is pushed, Every build will have a preview URL. So it helps not only to develop, but also to the decision makers, also to the QA people, also to the uh, people who are responsible for giving the approvals in the form of UAT testing. We will try to see it as a part of product demo. Uh, security protections. Uh, with the help of secure compute, uh, there are no limitations in terms of applying security on your applications. Apart from that, when we talk about this, this is a kind of protections, uh, IP limiting, IP blocking, those kind of features are already available as a part of a uh, platform uh, and serverless compute. <coughs> uh, I won't spend a lot of time on it, uh, this is just like uh, we have looked together features in some categories, we start with infrastructure, edge network, compute, observability, storage. Storage is one of the newest suit of products we have launched recently. Uh, build and iterate, again, this is more about workflow automation and security, uh, about firewall, uh, failure replication, and also about secure compute. The core value, you know, the core value drivers, uh, why we really develop this and why we are uh, ensuring that this is available for wide range of front end developers and customers. Uh, because of these value drivers, let's go one by one. <coughs> move fast with modern stack and uh, when we say move fast, faster time to market, uh, which is considered always a key uh, to ensure you are much ahead in the competition. Uh, this is what the observation, you know. Uh, organization with strong developer velocity indicators, uh, when we talk about CICD kind of automation workflows, those all are developer velocity indicators, you know. Any company has those indicators as strong as the platform of Wilson, they observe 5x increase. So that is something a big number, you know, this itself is a big statistics. Uh, here as well, you know, improve and optimize digital effectiveness. Uh, this is applicable not only to your developers, but also to the end users. 0.1 second, you know, this number itself could look very, very simple and small, but you know, so this is what uh, they call in uh, California or Wall Street that millisecond can make you millions. <coughs> Again, uh, one of the important statistics about operational risk and reliability. Uh, here as well, uh, again, this is something uh, conducted by Uptime Lifetime and Institute, not Lifetime, uh, in 2020. Again, this was in the lead of a uh, little earlier than COVID, but stats would either remain same or they will go up, you know. Most important part, DevX, the developers. Uh, 
Again, one of the days when a beautiful cafeteria, certain facilities were the reasons for developers to stay with the same company for a long, long time. Uh, very first thing, uh, the, the picture changed by or during the COVID situation. That is not so much important now. What developers would really care? What company is giving them to be more efficient in their day-to-day -day job? Are they struggling with CI, CD? Are they? Do they need to wait for hours and hours just to push their simple feature request or feature branch to the day or QA branch? Uh, do they need to go through approval process just to make some simple change? You know, answer is no actually. You know, they want certain things automated, uh, certain things readily available with me, whether it could be in the form of CI, CD, certain integrations, certain performance monitoring, security metrics, which could be available for them. Just single click. Let's look at the product tool. Any questions, you know, because I'm so sorry, you know, my presentation did not have anything about Drupal. So, any questions about Next.js person? Uh, so far, so good. Okay, let's look at this uh, quick demo. And um, as this is demo, so I have to wrap it up as quickly as possible. But feel free to ask me the questions. Once you log into the Versal platform, so it has got three options for subscription: hobby, pro, and enterprise. The same with each and every SaaS-based company. Uh, once we log in, uh, we can get integration done for any big provider, inherent to support GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. Once we do that integration, this is what we get to see the uh, number of repos. And here, I just need to import it. And once that is imported, uh, this is where you know we call it as what it looks like a life for the developer uh, when he is into Versal platform. Okay, so Git integration is done as a part of activities. I will go to my ID, I will change the code, and my code is done. I will commit it. Then I need to check my deployment. Deployment is done uh, because workflow is automated. Again, you, there could be a question oh, I just have committed, right? Nothing is merged with any major branches. So here is a key here. Then I can just check how deployment was. Everything was good. It also gives certain statistics about your monitoring. If anything is broken, if anything is not working, if there were any kind of operations creating some kind of static pages, uh, dynamic configurations, this is what it is going to highlight here. As a part of this demo, everything was good. Once I verify, deploy mode, deployment was perfect. Now, preview deployment is in progress. So what it means, once it is complete, I will get a unique URL which I can pass on to anyone. So that URL can be tested, queued, anyone can perform any kind of UAT. And most important part is about monitoring. Uh, again, there are multiple ways of monitoring your application in person. Uh, two things we discussed. One was how your application is performing on internet and how your application is performing in the platform. This is what it is in platform. Here as well, without integrating any kind of third-party monitoring tools like um, uh, Sumo Logic, uh, we can get the statistics uh, for a limited period of 30 days. If you need to have more than 30 days, you need to integrate it with third-party systems on your own. Deployment is over. Uh, preview deployment is also over. We have got the URL and this is why we can just go and visit the website that we have created. This really doesn't stop here, you know. Uh, once my website is visually available for me, it can be sent to anyone, and here we can just give comments. So can we try changing the header if I say yes, and this gets recorded actually. These comments are even getting recorded in the platform. 
Going a little further, we also have uh, in the process of integrating it with some kind of project made tools like Jira. Uh, so still that is in progress, not done yet. Again, I can just check my pull requests. See what all things it has. And done. So your changes lie onto the internet. As simple as that. And uh, that's what I had for this session. Any questions, uh, please feel free to let me know. Um, if you think any of your projects from your companies may need such kind of setup, feel free to reach out to LinkedIn through message or connections. And uh, that's it, I think. Any questions again, you know? So, yeah. platform is for only next year, so you can offer Thanks for asking this question, you know. Uh, uh, I put an example of Next.js because I had to choose one of the framework uh, but Versus supports more than 40 JS frameworks or I would say 20 frameworks It supports Vue, it supports Nast, AngularJS What about Node.js? It does support Yeah, we, we, can, we can upload or deploy our Node.js components as well and it works uh, Definitely we will never ever recommend to deploy a code something like Python or PHP because environment is not made for scripting languages like backend scripting languages. It will just keep on consuming the resources. As we know about Drupal as well, you know, this is one of the best system I have ever seen in my 60 to 70 years of experience. But Drupal is an extremely heavyweight system, right? It's not a lightweight system, but it was not made to be lightweight primarily. Any other question? So what about the headless CMS we are if you will close the set of headless CMS, or frontend is next share and backend is a tool? Yeah. So in that case, how do you integrate how we sync with this particular software? Super. Uh, thanks for asking this question as well. As long as your CMS is headless, it doesn't matter for us. So if your front end is any of the 40 plus frameworks that we support, you can deploy your front end application to us. We also have collaborated with certain CMSs like Sitecore, Contentful, uh, Content, uh, some commerce tools like uh, OS Commerce. So even those integrations are in place. We also have some kind of template marketplace uh, where there are readily available repos which you can log into a website platform and on single click deploy it, check it, test it, verify if it is going to work for you and then go for paid or enterprise kind of services. Yeah, but you say, how do we link with the, how do we sync with the requirement? Because it's a, you, know, you say it, it's uh, just import, <coughs> it will uh, regenerate the, uh, one URL that will uh, shown to the other over and something. Mm -hmm. How do we sync with the requirements if we are using the front end as a link, a react JS? Uh, okay, you know, again, uh, please let me know if this answer is very, very generic. If I have a website pralda.com and if my front end actual front end application will get hosted on sonar.com, there would be some kind of handshake, right? So if I'm using Nextshares as a front end technology and on pralda.com the site is hosted with Drupal, there will be some kind of handshake, right? And when handshake is established, it is a secure way of communication, whether it is your data configurations okay. with Drupal for a very, very long time. I have used inline editing even in Drupal 7x. Definitely it was a part of contributed module. Now it is a part of core. So if such kind of features are there in your CMS or any application you guys are using, this may not be available as is in Nextshares. That is something you will have to implement. The way we have got index types in Drupal, Nextshares 13x has included something called as IO, image operations. Well, automatically it is going to pick the image sizes and it will keep on displaying it. So, to answer it, if there is some kind of slideshow kind of facility in your CMS, now in Drupal, because of Nextshare's integration, everything is just a fraction of a second. You call that view name and it is displayed in Nextshare's. But I don't know how it would happen with some CMS like Contentful. We may have to develop it. As long as I have got, if my slideshow in Drupal, now let's assume there is no integration of Drupal and Nextshares, which is developed by Chapter 3 company. What I would do, as a part of Nextshares, Drupal knows there are 10 images in my slideshow. 
when Drupal is going to expose that data, NextJS is going to consume it obviously. NextJS will know there are 10 images. Then we have to implement that slideshow logic at NextJS level. Again, the way it is with Drupal, uh, Chapter 3 has integrated or developed this contributed model. Same way, most of the popular CMSs have implemented the inherent integration with NextJS, not only with NextJS, but also with next kind of frameworks. So, you won't have to struggle for at least basic things. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, please. You are saying that uh, the data will be exposed for the same images, just with that way, for example. Yeah. Uh, then we might need to build that site to compare it in the next Excel, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, like, in that way, we can customize it from the next Excel, what we want to do. Exactly. So, data will just be. Yeah, because. If I am working with any CMS, what it is going to help hold is data, right? Content. And content could be anything, it could be image, configuration, whatnot. Again, with uh, any framework like Nexus, uh, again, I am so sorry I talked a lot about Nexus. It could be true with Nexus as well. These have got freely available open source libraries. If it is about slideshow, uh, okay, slideshow in Drupal may look a little different, but if I have my Drupal site in Prada.com and I want to have front-end site developed in NextJS in Sonar.com, why did I use Prada.com, right? I will always use NextJS. So access to public access to this Drupal site would be blocked, you know, but obvious. So uh, that way we can keep on developing that in uh, NextJS. Again, the uh, most important part, you know, uh, if you look at um, uh, any of these NFT sites. Most of the sites are in NextJS. Now, there could be a question if it is NFT site or trading site, uh, there is a lot of business logic happening, right? Uh, complicated business logic. So, NextJS and NextJS, it has got nothing to do with that business logic. It is not going to take care of business logic. Business logic will be handled that backend part. If I am using Drupal for my trading application, complicated computations will be happening in Drupal. What I am worried about as a front-end developer is data. Manipulations will never ever take place in, ideally you know, it can take place, but complicated manipulations will never ever take place in next years. It will take place somewhere else, that will expose that data, it will consume that data, and data is displayed. Again, uh, there would be one more question. Uh, this could be applicable for kind of simple website. If I am a developer, I have my personal blog, in that case, I would care less for making my site fast. Uh, but if there is a e-commerce kind of setup, uh, recently we worked with uh, uh, First Post. We worked with Election Commission of USA, uh, and results were amazing. So when it goes beyond hundreds, beyond a couple of thousands, beyond tens of thousands, beyond lakhs or a few millions. Then we need to take care, you know, we need to worry about it. We have talked a couple of times about developer velocity indicator. You know, this is what uh, most of the SaaS companies are struggling with in their customers. Uh, because it's a different picture in India. Uh, if I want to spend 10k per month for any of the monitoring or workflow automation tool, we would say, oh, come on, you know, I will hire two people. <laughs> I will end up saving my $6,000 per month and these two people will keep on working on it. But you know, think about the dependence, you know. Uh, the tools like Versa, most of the cases they are expensive. So, we are 10 times expensive than AWS. At least 10 to 12 percent. So, if you need to use this, people would always have an argument of come on. If similar things are available in AWS, for $1,000 and you guys are giving for $10,000. What is the reason, you know? These are the things, you know, we focus on these developer velocity indicators, lot of automations, uh, dependency animation. And uh, during the project, uh, if we focus on those things, I doubt if we will be able to work on the project efficiently. Any other questions? Yes, please. And do people still use your platform as being so much expensive? They do. They do. And um, now, because I am CSM, 
I work only with enterprise customers, so I know how much they use it. So most of the cases, people start with basic enterprise plan and within three, four months, within a couple of quarters, they keep on expanding their subscriptions. Uh, this is what I said, you know, I gave an example of personal blog. If I had my personal blog, I would worry less. But I have a business site which is getting some revenue for me, they will worry about it. Uh, in fact, three of, two of my customers were listed as a part of, in the list of top 100 cloud companies last year. Again, they did sell their cloud companies, but they had subscription for person. And uh, one of the most common benefit that most of the customers with person express in their feedback is they say their developers are extremely happy. Uh, they don't have to monitor their team as extensively as they were used to earlier. Uh, I have been working in IT since SBA days. So I know the pain of this CI CD, you know. Uh, I have seen developers fighting with each other. Why did you merge that, you know, before I merged it? So, uh, that pain definitely is not there currently because of Git and Git, GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. They themselves support some kind of automations, but I still think, you know, those automations are not still up to the mark to make the life easier for developers. And uh, whichever company you take, you know, uh, if you see some company as a top because the developers are happy, that is why they are on top. Any company, let's not take the names. Uh, you may ask this question to yourself as well, which was the company with whom you stayed for longer and longer time. The answer could be they cared for you. Now this care is not about PF, any money factor. This care is about how well versed or how are they empowering you with the tool set, with the technology, uh, with the setup. Any other question before we conclude the session? Go to the next version of yeah. So, is that how, how you are managing that integrated and everything like that? So, okay. everything and everything inside your. Yes, yes. Now, uh, this is something I like this knowledge, frankly speaking. Um, I'm not a developer, uh, but uh, correct me over the. I know the answer partially, I prefer not to answer it. Correct me over the uh, LinkedIn. Uh, let me forward you some blog posts from us. Okay. Definitely be careful. Uh, it is called as backward compatibility, right? Uh, if you are asking this question from Drupal perspective, no, no, no. no, no again, Drupal has one of the best backward compatibility, right? At this apex onwards, it is known as smooth as that. We are still growing, we are still maturing, but what are the sensitive features uh, like image optimization? If we are going to integrate or implement new features specific with IO, Definitely that will be backward compatible. But now if there is a dependency on Node.js, latest version, if some customer is using Node.js which was back available back in 2020, there is no way next year can support that. Things will break down. But still, you know, as I said, this is quite comparatively new, new setup of the and uh, Message me over the LinkedIn, let me share you some blog posts. Yeah? Yeah. Then, thanks very much for your availability. And uh, as I said, uh, whenever you think any of your project may need such kind of setup, feel free to reach out to me over the LinkedIn. Okay? Thank you.